Let's talk about 25 iOS 16 settings you need to turn off now. From the battery saving to the privacy protecting and even those sneaky settings that Apple really wants you to leave on, we'll cover them all. We'll start with one new setting you need to turn off to turn on a pretty handy feature. iOS 16 adds an unnecessary spotlight search button to the home screen. And if you wanna get rid of that button, open settings, scroll down, tap home screen, and then turn off the switch next to show on home screen. It's not just that the button itself is useless. To open Spotlight, you can just swipe down anywhere in the middle of the screen. When you turn off the button, you get this awesome home screen slider. Yeah, and for those of you with a lot of home screens, like me, you can swipe back and forth nice and easily to get to your other home screens. Let's talk about some of the most overlooked iPhone settings. Apple buries them because they really don't want you to turn them off. Open up the settings app, tap back to the main page of settings and scroll up to your name at the top of the screen. Tap on that. Then tap name, phone numbers, email, and then scroll down to this subscriptions section. By turning these switches off, you won't receive any Apple marketing communications, AKA spam. Turn those off. There's another setting buried in here. Tap back upper left hand corner of the screen, then tap media and purchases. Tap view account and turn off the switch next to personalized recommendations to help cut down on the data Apple is collecting about you to sell you stuff. We're gonna talk about more ways that Apple collects your data in a minute, but first let's take a look and see how secure your iPhone really is. Let's tap done upper right hand corner of the screen back to the main page of settings. Scroll down and tap on privacy and security. Here you'll see a list of your apps and features. Which apps do you want having access to things like your camera? your photos, your contacts. Here's where you get to decide. Let's tap on photos and look at this list of apps. Does Facebook need access to your photos? Probably not all of them. So we tap on Facebook, maybe selected photos. You get to pick and choose which photos Facebook needs instead of giving them access to all of your photos. Let's tap back upper left-hand corner of the screen back to the main privacy and security page, microphone. Which apps need access to your microphone? TikTok? Maybe not, especially if you're just watching videos. Let's tap back upper left-hand corner of the screen and then tap on camera. See where we're going with this? We recommend taking the section one by one and turning off permissions for apps that don't need them. Let's tap back to the main privacy and security page. One more we wanna talk about research, sensor, and usage data. Turn that switch off. Let's talk about another way Apple collects information about you. Let's tap back upper left-hand corner of the screen Scroll down and tap on analytics and improvements. Turn all of these switches off. Easier way to do that. Just tap that switch at the top of the screen. Turns most of them off. Turn off share iCloud analytics. Turn off improve Siri and dictation. To see just how much data Apple is collecting, you can tap on analytics data and you've got this very long list. As a bonus, turning these switches off saves battery life and some cellular data too. But wait, there's another way Apple is collecting data about you. Tap back upper left hand corner of the screen back again, one below analytics and improvements is Apple advertising. Like most big tech companies, Apple collects information about you to show you targeted ads. You can see the information they actually have about you by tapping view ad targeting information. We recommend turning off personalized ads. We promise you won't see low quality ads now because Apple won't let low quality advertisers into their ad network. All that being said, Apple is very good about maintaining your privacy. The same can't be said about a lot of other tech companies. Let's tap back upper left hand corner of the screen, scroll to the top of the page and tap on tracking. These apps want to track you across other apps and websites. If the switch is on next to an app, that app has permission to track you. Now you can pick and choose. Maybe you have a soft spot for Mark Zuckerberg. Or you can turn off the switch next to allow apps to request a track at the top of the screen, ask apps to stop tracking, turns off all the switches and now in the future apps can't even request to track you. We promised you battery tips, so let's get into those and we don't even have to go far. Tap back to privacy and security in the upper left hand corner of the screen, then tap location services. You'll see a list of your apps and when they're allowed to access your location. The real danger here is the word always. That means an app can access your location all the time, even when you're not using it. Using GPS on your phone uses more battery than almost anything else. I like to ask myself, do I want to allow this app to drain my battery? If you see an app with the word always, tap on that app in the list and choose something else while using the app or ask next time, usually pretty safe bets. Also watch out for precise location. How precise does that location really need to be for an app like Snapchat? 
not that precise. And the more precisely your iPhone tracks your movements, the more battery it uses. Credit where credit is due, Apple is getting better at letting you know when apps are constantly using your location in the background. I had one time where DraftKings used my location 32 times in the background over three days. Next, let's step back to the location services, upper left-hand corner of the screen, and then scroll all the way down to the bottom of the list until you see system services, tap on that. We're gonna turn off pretty much everything in here. And even if you've turned off some of these switches before, don't be surprised that they got turned back on after you updated your iPhone. Turn off everything except emergency calls and SOS, find my iPhone, and unless you want to know which direction you're walking, motion calibration and distance. I was recently in Washington, DC, not familiar with the area at all. Having motion calibration and distance on was super helpful, but most of the time I just turn it off. Share my location if it's a feature you use, and system customization. If you turn this off, Apple says that optimized battery charging won't work. Optimized battery charging isn't as useful as it sounds, and I think you're better off turning off this setting and the next one we're going to talk about, which is significant location. So let's tap on significant locations. Here you'll see a list of the places you visit most often. It's a little creepy. Creepy. Creepy, use a little bit of battery life. We recommend turning the switch off at the top of the screen, tap turn off. Let's tap back upper left hand corner of the screen. We have three product improvement switches. iPhone analytics. Didn't we already turn that off? I thought so, but apparently not. Tap that switch, turn it off. Routing and traffic. Off. And Apple Maps. Turn that off. Fun fact, if you uninstall maps on your iPhone, which I have done, this switch goes away. Hmm. Let's talk about a new iOS 16 setting that's very important for your privacy. Let's tap back upper left hand corner of the screen. Back again back one more time to reach the main page of settings, scroll up and tap on notifications. Then tap on screen sharing, allow notifications while screen sharing. Turn that off. When the switch is off, your messages won't appear when you're sharing your screen. There could be something you don't want other people to see. There's one more iOS 16 setting that you need to know about. But before we get to that, we need to talk about the most important setting for people with a 5G iPhone and those of you who are thinking about getting the iPhone 14. Let's tap back upper left-hand corner of the screen, back to the main page of settings and scroll up and tap on your name at the top of the screen. Then tap iCloud and then tap iCloud backup. Backup over cellular, turn that switch off. Just one backup over cellular could use your entire cellular data plan. Even unlimited data plans have high-speed data caps. While you're in here, tap on your iPhone underneath all device backups and see if there's anything you don't need to have backed up to iCloud. It's a great way to save money on iCloud storage space. So TikTok, for instance, don't need that. And for you 5G iPhone users out there, there's another setting you need to turn off. Let's tap back to backup, upper left-hand corner of the screen, back again, back. Just go back to the main page of settings, then tap on cellular. Tap cellular data options and then tap voice and data. Choose 5G auto or LTE. If there's no 5G where you live, definitely choose LTE. Let's tap back upper left-hand corner of the screen and then tap on data mode. A lot more data on 5G is the dangerous one here because it means that your iPhone might use your cellular data instead of Wi-Fi. You'll also save a lot of battery life. LTE uses less battery than 5G. Standard or low data mode is the way to go. But wait, there's a one more cellular setting we need to turn off. Let's tap back upper left-hand corner of the screen, back to the main cellular page, scroll down until you see iCloud Drive, turn that switch off. This is another setting that even for you unlimited plan users out there can burn through your entire high-speed data cap really fast. Next, we have two mail settings, one of which we've never talked about before on this channel. We realize we go through these settings kind of fast. If you join our channel, you can download a PDF with all of the settings we tell you to turn off in this video. Click the join button below to find out how. Back to those mail settings, tap back to settings upper left hand corner of the screen, scroll down and tap on mail. First, let's tap accounts and then fetch new data. Turn off push at the top of the screen. When push is on, your iPhone maintains a connection to the email server and it's constantly asking, is there mail, is there mail, is there mail? Fetch lets you decide how often to check for new mail. Here underneath fetch, we have every 30 minutes, every hour, every 15 minutes, 30 minutes, safe bet for most people, and you can always fetch new mail anytime you open the mail app. That alone will save you a lot of battery life. But what about that mail setting that we've never talked about before? Tap back to the main mail page, scroll down and tap blocked sender options. You blocked them for a reason, right? 
Yep. Do you really want their messages to show up in your inbox? Nope. Let's tap move to trash. Next, let's talk about messages you send. Let's tap back to the main page of settings, scroll up and tap on Siri and search, then tap on automatically send messages and turn off the automatically send messages switch. It's a good idea to review your messages before you send them. It's going to be a while before I trust Siri that much. You're right not to trust Siri. You also shouldn't trust random personal hotspots. Let's tap back upper left hand corner of the screen. Back to the main page of settings, scroll up and tap Wi-Fi. Then scroll down to auto join hotspot and select never. You don't want your iPhone going around and asking to join personal hotspots that don't belong to you. The person who owns the hotspot might collect all sorts of information about you. And it's just plain rude. The next setting is one we don't agree on, except when kids are involved. Let's tap back to the main page of settings. Then tap sounds and haptics, tap headphone safety, and here we have reduce loud sounds. Now I believe you're an adult, unless you're not, and you can choose how loud your music gets on your own. I don't want my iPhone automatically lowering my volume for me. And as an adult, I don't want to accidentally blow up my eardrums. Well, fortunately for me, anytime I connect my Beats Fit Pro to my iPhone, it lowers them to the volume they were at last, which is always a responsible volume. What do you want, a parade? No, I want a subscribe. Whoa. Please subscribe to this channel. Here's something we can agree on. It's annoying how app developers are always asking me for five-star reviews. Let's tap back to the main page of settings. Scroll down and tap on App Store. Here we have in-app ratings and reviews. Turn that switch off. While we're here, let's talk about automatic app downloads. We recommend turning that switch off. It's pretty annoying if you have an iPad and all your iPhone apps get installed on your iPad. I've been there. And there's another way to stop your iPhone from downloading information it doesn't need to. Let's tap back to the main page of settings. Scroll down and tap on Safari. Preload top hit, turn that switch off. This setting exists because Apple is so sure you're going to click on the first Google results that they load the page in the background so it opens faster when you tap on it. But if you don't choose that top hit, your iPhone just downloaded something unnecessarily, use a little bit of cellular data and battery life. The next setting is one that sounds good, but it really isn't. We actually think Apple makes it confusing because they don't want you to turn it off. In your Safari settings, scroll down to Privacy Preserving Ad Measurement. This setting should just be called Ad Measurement. When you turn off the switch, it doesn't mean that your privacy isn't preserved. It just means that there isn't any ad measurement, even the privacy preserving kind. Turn that switch off. This next setting is especially frustrating for those of us who like sending high quality pictures to our family and friends. Let's tap back to settings in the upper left hand corner of the screen, then tap messages. Scroll down to low quality image mode. When this is on, images will be sent in lower quality. Turn that switch off. Low quality images are annoying, but on the flip side, ProRes and ProRaw also kind of annoying. Let's tap back to settings upper left hand corner of the screen, scroll down and tap on camera then tap formats. ProRes is not necessary on an iPhone. I don't care how big the file gets. ProRes on an iPhone is not the same as ProRes on a high quality camera. All it does is fill up your storage space so you end up buying more iCloud storage. We just turned off a lot of iPhone settings, but did you know there are a ton of settings you need to turn on to watch that video next? It is appearing on the screen now.